हेलो स्टूडेंट्स गुड टाइम टू ऑल आई एम चंदन कुमार प्रधान वेलकम टू दिस चैनल चंदन फिजिक्स इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस एनालिटिसिटी एंड कॉसिरेम एंड कंडीशंस एंड सम एग्जांपल्स रिलेटेड टू एनालिटिक फंक्शंस लेट्स बिगिन व्हाट इज एनालिटिक फंक्शन दैट इन कॉम्प्लेक्स वेरिएबल्स a function f of z is said to be analytic at a given point that given point let z0 or we can say it as z0 what is the condition if that function f of z is differentiable not only at z0 point but also every point of some neighborhood of z0 that function f of z is differentiable at the point z0 and also some neighborhood points of z0 in other way we can say that function is analytic in a domain if it is analytic at every point of that of domain if a domain is given we say either that function is analytic or not means if that function is analytic throughout that of domain that indicates in all the points of that of given domain that function is analytic that analytic function is also known as holomorphic regular or we can see it as monogenic these are the names of analytic function now we have to study what are the necessary conditions for a function f of z is to be analytic or not and what are the sufficient conditions for that function is analytic or not first one the necessary conditions for the function f of z is to be analytic means that function must satisfy these conditions otherwise we can't say that function is analytic or not the necessary condition for a function f of z that is given as u plus iv to be analytic at all points in a given region r the condition is here del u by del x is equal to del v by del y del u by del y is equal to minus del v by del x provided that all the partial derivatives as del u by del x del u by del y del v by del x del v by del y are exist let me prove that necessary conditions for f of z to be analytic let f of z be an analytic function in a given region r that is f of z is written as u plus iv u is a function of xy and v also a function of xy which are the real variables let me prefer del u and del v be the increments of u and v respectively that corresponding to increments 
in x and y as u as a function of x and y and v also a function of x y x and y so the increments in u and v results the increments in x and y the increments in x and y as uh, del x <coughs> and del y of x and y here del u is a increment in u del v is the increment in v del x is the increment in x and del y is the increment in y therefore we write it as f of z plus delta z some increment in that function that is delta z so here the increment in u and v so increment in u it is u plus delta u plus i increment in v that is v plus delta v as increment in that of function results the increment in u and v now as we have to found f dash of z its differentiability therefore we need f of z plus delta z minus f of z divided by delta z f of z plus delta z that much u plus delta u plus i v plus delta v minus f of z u plus iv divided by delta z so minus u plus u minus iv plus iv cancel out here the existing term as delta u plus i delta v divided by delta z it is rewrite as del u delta u by delta z plus i delta v by delta z now taking the limit on both sides limit delta z approaches to 0 or delta z tends to 0 we read a we read that particular term f z plus delta z minus f of z divided by delta z is equal to limit delta z tends to 0 del u by del z plus i del v by del z or that is the definition of differentiability in complex variables that is given as f dash z which is equal to limit delta z tends to 0 del u by del z plus i del v by del z as equation number 1 look at here as we, we prefer z is equal to x plus i y so increment in z del z is equal to increment in x plus increment in y according to the concept of increments in u and v so since del z approaches to 0, we have to find out del z can approach 0 in any path, either we choose x or we choose y. Since del z can approach 
जीरो एलंग एनी पाथ एलंग एक्स एक्सिस हुई चीज हुई चुवान इज रियल एक्सिस और एलंग वाई एक्सिस हुई चुवान इज इमेजिनरी एक्सिस व्हेन वी प्रीफर एलंग एक्स एक्सिस मींस वाई टर्म विल बी जीरो हैविंग प्योर रियल व्हेन वी प्रीफर वाई एक्सिस एक्स टर्म विल बी जीरो आज टेकिंग प्योर इमेजिनरी फर्स्ट वन टेकिंग एलंग रियल एक्सिस व्हिच वन इज एक्स एक्सिस आज वी नो जेड इज इक्वल टू एक्स प्लस आई वाई बट ऑन एक्स एक्सिस वाई टर्म विल बी जीरो देर फोर जेड इज इक्वल टू एक्स आज ए रेजल्ट डेल्टा एक्स सॉरी डेल्टा जेड इज इक्वल टू डेल्टा एक्स वेर आज डेल्टा वाई विल बी जीरो आज यू प्रिफर इट कोऑर्डिनेट एक्सेस आज एक्स आज रियल वाई आज इमेजिनरी यार पी टू क्यू दैट इज स्मॉल इंक्रीमेंट इन दैट ऑफ डेल जेड इज इक्वल टू डेल्टा एक्स वेर आज वाई टर्म आज जीरो आज यू प्रिफर जेड इज इक्वल टू एक्स प्लस आई वाई Now that value is putted to that of equation number one. Putting these values in equation one, putting these values in equation one, we get. So f dash z is equal to limit here delta z tends to that is delta x delta x tends to zero as delta y terms vanishes delta u by delta x plus i delta v by delta x or f dash z is equal to taking the limit on both the terms the first term will be limit delta x tends to 0 delta u by delta x plus i limit delta x tends to 0 delta v by delta x Or f dash z is equal to that is the partial differentiation definition of partial differentiation as del u by del x plus i del v by del x that equation number two next along imaginary axis. Which one is the y-axis? As we prefer, z is equal to x plus i y. Z is equal to x plus i y. But uh, on y-axis, x term will be zero. therefore z is equal to 0 plus iy which implies delta z is equal to i delta y whereas delta x will be 
as we preferred the plane as x o y y as imaginary axis here the point as uh, p q so at that of point when we prefer z is equal to x plus i y so delta z is equal to i delta y as delta x term will be 0 delta x term will be 0 Now putting that value in equation number 1, putting these values in equation 1, we get that is f dash z, f dash z is equal to limit here delta y tends to 0 and delta u divided by the y term and the imaginary part i delta y plus i delta v divided by i delta y or taking the limits on both terms as limit delta y tends to 0 delta u divided by i delta y plus limit delta y tends to 0 i i cancel out so delta v by delta y here just i is multiplied on numerator and denominator side so we have i divided by i square that changes to minus i we have f dash z is equal to minus i according to the definition of partial differentiation that is del u by del y plus del v by del y that is equation number 3. As the condition we prefer that function f of z is differentiable then its first differentiation that is f dash z must be same on both these conditions if f of z is differentiable then two values of f dash z must be equal therefore del u by del x plus i del v by del x is equal to minus i del u by del y plus del v by del y. Now equating the real and imaginary parts on both sides equating the real and imaginary parts we get so real parts del u by del x del u by del x is equal to del v by del y and imaginary parts i del v by del x is equal to minus i del u by del y so i i cancel out we have uh, del v by del x here are the imaginary parts equating oh, del v
the term here equated del u by del x is equal to del v by del y. Hmm. Del v by del x is equal to del v by del x del v by del x is equal to del v by del x is equal to minus del u by del y minus del u by del y or that is rewrite as del u by del y is equal to minus del v by del x. So, the two equations del u by del x is equal to del v by del y del u by del y is equal to minus del v by del x. del v by del x these two equations are known as the Cauchy Riemann equations. These two equations are known as Cauchy Riemann equations or we read it as CR equations, CR equations, Cauchy Riemann equations or CR equations. When a function satisfy that Cauchy Riemann equation, that condition for that function to be analytic that for necessary condition for that function to be analytic. You prove that condition in real axis and imaginary axis and comparing these two equations we have. Next the sufficient condition for that function f of z to be analytic. The sufficient condition for a function f of z given as u plus i v to be analytic at all the points in that given region r. The condition is it is satisfy the Cauchy Riemann equations as del u by del x is equal to del v by del y, del u by del y is equal to minus del v by del x and all these four partial derivatives as del u by del x, del u by del y, del v by del x, del v by del y are continuous functions of x and y in that of given region. Let me prove the sufficient condition for that function to be analytic, let f of z be a single valued function having the partial derivatives del u by del x, del u by del y del v by del x, del v by del y at each point in the region R then Cauchy Riemann equation are satisfied. Here we use Taylor's theorem to expand by using Taylor's theorem to expand the function f z plus delta z as it is written as uh, u as a function of x y. So, increment in x, x plus delta x, increment of y y plus delta y plus i v as increment in x and y. So, x plus 
डेल्टा एक्स वाई प्लस डेल्टा वाई हियर आई यूज द टेलर्स थ्योरम टू एक्सपैंड दैट पर्टिकुलर फंक्शन यूजिंग टेलर्स थ्योरम हियर वी हैव यू एक्स वाई प्लस डेल यू बाई डेल एक्स टू डेल्टा एक्स प्लस डेल यू बाई डेल वाई इन टू डेल्टा वाई प्लस डट 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 दैट इज द एक्सपेंशन ऑफ द रियल पार्ट प्लस आई दिन एक्सपेंशन ऑफ दैट इमेजिनरी पार्ट बाय यूजिंग टेलर्स थ्योरम दैट इज भी एक्स वाई प्लस डेल भी बाय डेल एक्स डेल्टा एक्स प्लस डेल भी बाय डेल्टा वाई डेल वाई डेल्टा वाई प्लस डट डट प्लस डट 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 इन सेट दैट ऑफ रैकेट हियर यू एक्स वाई यू इज ए फंक्शन ऑफ एक्स वाई प्लस आई इज मल्टीप्लाइड हियर सो आई भी एज ए फंक्शन ऑफ एक्स वाई प्लस नेक्स्ट टर्म्स आज डेल यू बाय डेल एक्स डेल्टा एक्स प्लस हियर टेकिंग एज अनदर टर्म एज आई डेल भी बाय डेल्टा एक्स डेल डेल भी बाय डेल एक्स डेल्टा एक्स प्लस एगेन डेल यू बाई डेल वाई डेल यू बाई डेल वाई डेल्टा वाई प्लस आई डेल भी डेल्टा डेल वाई डेल्टा वाई प्लस डट 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 द टर्म्स आर कंटिन्यूड हियर वी हैव टू इग्नोर द टर्म्स ऑफ सेकेंड पावर और हायर पावर पावर्स Ignoring the terms of second power or higher powers. So we have the term that is written as f of z. u of x y plus i v of x y that is a complex function f of z plus then del u by del x plus i del v by del x taking del x as common plus del u by del y plus i del v by del y taking del y as common और एफ ऑफ जेड प्लस डेल्टा जेड दैट फंक्शन टू दिस साइड माइनस ऑफ एफ ऑफ जेड इज इक्वल टू डेल यू बाई डेल्टा एक्स प्लस आई डेल भी बाय डेल एक्स डेल्टा एक्स प्लस डेल यू बाय डेल्टा वाई प्लस आई डेल भी बाय डेल्टा वाई डेल्टा वाई एंड इक्वेशन नंबर हियर we know from shear equation cosseriemann equations that is del u by del x 
इज इक्वल टू डेल भी बाई डेल वाई एंड डेल यू बाई डेल वाई इज इक्वल टू माइनस डेल भी बाई डेल एक्स बाई यूजिंग दैट कच्ची रेम एंड इक्वेशन दैट सेकेंड टर्म चेंज सो इक्वेशन वन बिकम्स इक्वेशन वन बिकम्स एफ ऑफ जेड प्लस डेल्टा जेड माइनस एफ ऑफ जेड इज इक्वल टू डेल यू बाई डेल एक्स प्लस आई डेल वी बाई डेल एक्स डेल्टा एक्स प्लस माइनस डेल वी बाई डेल एक्स प्लस आई डेल वी बाई डेल भी बाई डेल वाई आज डेल यू बाई डेल एक्स डेल यू बाई डेल एक्स डेल्टा वाई इज इक्वल टू डेल यू बाई डेल एक्स प्लस आई डेल भी बाई डेल एक्स डेल एक्स टेकिंग आई एस कॉमन ऑन दैट सेकेंड टर्म वी हैव प्लस आई डेल भी बाई डेल एक्स प्लस डेल यू बाई डेल एक्स इंटू आई डेल वाई Here the term is common del u by del x plus i del v by del x. So del x plus i del y. That is del u by del x plus i. डेल भी बाई डेल एक्स सो डेल एक्स प्लस आई डेल वाई विच वन इज डेल जेड इंक्रीमेंट इन एक्स एंड वाई आर जेड इज इक्वल टू एक्स प्लस आई वाई दैट डेल जेड इज डिवाइडेड ऑन दिस साइड वी हैव एफ जेड प्लस डेल जेड माइनस एफ ऑफ जेड डिवाइडेड बाई डेल जेड इज इक्वल टू डेल यू बाई डेल एक्स प्लस आई डेल भी बाई डेल एक्स और टेकिंग दैट लिमिट लिमिट डेल्टा जेड टेंस टू जीरो एफ ऑफ जेड प्लस डेल्टा जेड माइनस एफ ऑफ जेड डिवाइडेड बाई डेल्टा जेड इज इक्वल टू डेल यू बाई डेल एक्स प्लस आई डेल भी बाई डेल एक्स दैट इज द डिफ्रेंसिएबल विच वन इज एफ डी एस जेड इज इक्वल टू डेल यू बाई डेल एक्स प्लस आई डेल भी बाई डेल एक्स एगेन आई कैन यूज द कची रेम एन इक्वेशन चेंजिंग डेल यू बाई डेल एक्स और एफ डी एस जेड ऑल्सो रिटेन एज डेल भी बाई डेल वाई हियर माइनस आई डेल यू बाई डेल वाई आज डेल भी बाई डेल एक्स इज यूल माइनस डेल यू बाई डेल वाई so it is satisfy the sufficient condition as we prefer here the sufficient condition it is satisfy the kachri mein equation and all the partial derivatives are continuous function in x and y in that of given region we prove it by taking that function differentiable so here For the concept of analytic function, analyticity and Kutcher-Riemann conditions, here the definition of analytic function, necessary condition that function to be analytic means that function satisfy the Kutcher-Riemann equations. Here the Kutcher-Riemann equations, sufficient condition for that function to be analytic. All the partial derivatives are continuous in x and y in that of given region, 
and it is satisfy the shear equations. We prove the sufficient condition. The proof of the sufficient condition. Now, the Kachiriman equations in polar form. Shear equations in polar form. As uh, we know that uh, x is equal to r cos theta and u is a function of x and y therefore z is equal to x plus i y r cos theta plus i sin theta which is equal to r e to the power i theta or u plus i v is equal to f of z as you prefer so, f of r e to the power i theta taking as equation number 1. Now, differentiating that equation 1 with respect to r and differentiate and also differentiating that equation 1 with respect to theta and comparing these two equations, we get the shear equation in polar form. So, differentiating equation 1 with respect to r we get del u by del r plus i del v by del r is equal to f dash r e to the power i theta into e to the power i theta first differentiation next e into e to the power i theta equation number 2 again differentiating equation 1 with respect to theta differentiating equation 1 with respect to theta we get so del u by del theta plus i del v by del theta is equal to r del u by del r plus i del v by del r del u by del theta plus i del v by del theta so, its differentiation results its uh, derivative as f dash r e to the power i theta r e to the power i theta into i as it differentiate with respect to theta and equation number 3. Now, equation 3 can be written as in place of uh, f dash r e to the power i theta e to the power i theta that must be replaced as equation number 2. So, substituting substituting the value of f dash r e to the power i theta e to the power i theta from equation 2 in equation we get so del u by del theta plus i del v by del theta is equal to r del u by del r plus i del v by del r into i in place of that term I substitute that result equation number 2. i is multiplied to that of bracket del u by del theta plus i del v by del theta 
is equal to i r del u by del r i square is equal to minus 1 minus r del v by del r equation number let 4 here equating the real and uh, imaginary parts so what we have equating the real and imaginary parts we have real part del u by del theta del u by del theta is equal to minus r del v by del theta which implies del v by del r minus 1 by r del u by del theta and taking imaginary part we write that is uh, del u by del r 1 by r del v by del theta so taking real part del v by del r these two equations are the Cauchy Riemann equations in polar form del u by del r and del u by del theta. Now, we have to prefer some examples related to analytic functions by taking some questions to show either uh, these functions are analytic or not. So, these functions are analytic or not analytic. We use Cauchy Riemann equations for necessity condition and the existence of the partial derivatives for sufficient conditions solutions and i the function is given as f of z is equal to magnitude of z square so z is equal to x plus uh, i y which implies magnitude of z is x square plus y square under root so, magnitude of z square is equal to x square plus y square, but we know f of z as a function of uh, u plus i v which is equal to magnitude of z square that is written as uh, x square plus y square and comparing we have hence comparing real and imaginary parts we get u as a function of x y is equal to the real part that is x square plus y square and uh, v as a function of x y as 0 there will be no such imaginary part. The first order derivatives the first order partial derivatives here we prefer first order partial derivatives as del v by del x and del v by del y also exist sorry do not exist do not exist as I prefer del v by del y equal to 0. Hence, 
the shear equation are not satisfied. Therefore, the function given f of z as the magnitude of z square is not analytic. Next question to show that function f of z is equal to e to the power z is either analytic or not. Next question number 2. Here f of z is equal to e to the power z given where z is equal to x plus i y. So, f of z is equal to e to the power x plus i y that is e to the power x to e to the power i y or that function in terms of u b u plus i b is equal to e to the power x e to the power i y is equal to e to the power x. So, e to the power i y is written as cos y plus i sin y. Therefore, u as a function of x y plus i v as a function of x y is equal to e to the power x cos y plus i e to the power y sorry e to the power x sin y. Now, comparing both sides then we have u as a function of x y is equal to e to the power x cos y and v as a function of x y as e to the power x sin y. Now, we have to found out the partial derivatives as so del u by del x del u by del x is equal to e to the power x cos y and uh, del u by del y is equal to minus e to the power x sin y and del v by del x is equal to e to the power x sin y and del v by del y e to the power x cos y. These are the four partial derivatives. Since we take uh, the partial derivatives exist and continuous everywhere, so the partial derivatives exist and continuous everywhere. Now, the partial derivatives as del u by del x is equal to del v by del y that is e to the power x cos y also del u by del y is equal to minus del v by del x is equal to minus e to the power x sin y. So, it is satisfy the Cauchy Riemann equation satisfy that is C R equation satisfied. Therefore, the given function so f dash z exists so, the given function f of z is equal to e to the power z is analytic the given function f of z is analytic here that given function is not analytic according to the necessity and sufficient condition for a function to be analytic or not. Next question f of z is equal to 1 by z. 
third number question that can be solved by taking the polar form as we prefer here. Anyone can solve it by taking z is equal to x plus i y or uh, for easy for perspective uh, we use the polar form here f of z is equal to 1 by z putting z is equal to x plus i y as r cos theta plus i r sin theta or r cos theta plus i sin theta as r e to the power i theta r e to the power i theta in polar form we have f of z is equal to 1 by z is equal to nine, nine. 1 divided by r oh. e to the power i theta 1 by r e to the power minus i theta that is 1 by r cos theta minus i sin theta where we say the condition z not equal to 0 if it is 0 then it is infinity not satisfied that particular polar form which implies that function f of z is equal to u plus i v that is cos theta divided by r minus i sin theta divided by r which implies u r theta is equal to cos theta by r and v r theta is equal to minus sin theta by r next the partial derivatives then partial derivatives del u by del r equal to minus cos theta divided by r and del u by del theta minus sin theta divided by r next del v by del r that is sin theta divided by r square and del v by del theta minus cos theta divided by r these are the partial derivatives which is required to show the shear equations hence r del u by del r is equal to minus cos theta divided by r which is equal to del v by del theta. Similarly, del u by del theta is equal to minus sin theta divided by r which is same as minus r del v by del r these two are the shear equations in polar form are satisfied are satisfied and its differentiation f d s z exist Hence, we say the given function f of z is equal to 1 by z is analytic provided that z not equal to 0. This is analytic function. These are some examples to show that functions are analytic or not. First function not analytic second function is analytic as it satisfies shear conditions and that first order differentiation exists. Next function is analytic by taking the shear condition in polar form. 
and its first order differentiation is exist so that function is analytic so with the help of this video lecture we understand the analyticity and cauchy riemann conditions a function that is said to be analytic these are the conditions next that function is analytic throughout a given domain various names of analytic functions next necessary condition for that function to be analytic first theorem its proof from that theorem these equations are named as the cauchy riemann equations next sufficient condition for that function to be analytic its proof cauchy riemann equations in polar form we saw the cauchy riemann equations in a polar form and examples some analytic functions in the form of a problem so with this useful and informative notes let me wind up this session thank you